This episode is going to be the adult equivalent of me telling you that Santa does not exist. The most common mushroom myths I hear are usually surrounding the fly agaric Amanita muscaria. This is a fairly common mycorrhizal mushroom that grows around the world. It is not rare. It is not threatened. It is not endangered. Uh, they're also completely legal. And that is because this mushroom is both toxic, trippy, and edible all at the same time, depending on how you process it. Some of the misinformation I've heard, and I'm going to say this, and these are the myths that you tend to hear about it, is that Amity muscaria is a trippy, psychedelic mushroom. Vikings would take it before going into battle to throw themselves into a berserker rage and inspired red and white Santa Claus. Shamans used to go around and give them out, also associated with like flying reindeer because the reindeer would eat muscaria and then people would drink the reindeer piss to get high. So those are all, all the myths that you tend to hear around muscaria. So let me go through them sort of one by one and, and break them down. First of all, it is toxic. It contains ibotenic acid and muscimol. Despite the name, Amanita muscaria does not contain significant amounts of muscarine. Ibotenic acid is a neurotoxin, and in, if you have a lot of it in your system, you can like poke holes in your brain. It can cause really severe GI upset, and that usually manifests as like puking, diarrhea. It's not usually deadly when they ate a tremendous amount of it raw, and they probably died from just dehydration and throwing up and diarrhea and that kind of thing. It does not contain the deadly toxic amatoxins. Amity muscaria can be consumed as an edible mushroom. If you want to do that safely, you can put it into water, bring it to a boil, pour that water out, put fresh water in, bring it to boil again, pour that water out, and you can cook and eat it safely. So if you want to access the kind of trippy and theogenic properties of this mushroom, you have to understand the chemistry. The toxin is ibotenic acid, and that gets chemically converted into muscimol, and then make a tea out of it. And usually you add some lemon juice, boil it for a little while, and that helps to finish the conversion. And doing it at a low pH also helps to finish that decarboxylation of ibotenic acid into the entheogenic compound muscimol. That's chemistry. You do not need to drink reindeer pee to access muscimol. Better living through chemistry, just dry it out and you boil it, you add a little bit of lemon juice, boom, you have muscimol. There's no need to drink pee. Muscimol is an entheogenic compound. It is a dissociative sedative, puts you into sort of a lucid delirium, can cause sleepiness, wooziness, not trippy in the sense of psilocybin. It feels like you lose coordination, you like stumble a little bit, you might slur your words, and the effects will last for about two, three hours. And honestly, it just puts you to sleep. If you consume too much of it, it can put you in a coma for a couple of days. You may not want to go so hard on Amanita muscaria. Did Vikings take this mushroom and eat it before battle to get into a berserker rage? Um, well, given that it's a dissociative sedative and if you eat a lot of it, it makes you either like throw up or have diarrhea. I think it's pretty unlikely that Vikings ate this mushroom before going into battle. The only historical point of reference for that is from like a 17th century poet who sort of heard about the mystique of Vikings. They definitely did not eat this mushroom before going into battle because they would have been falling asleep or shit in their pants. What is more likely is that Vikings took a plant called henbane, which has analgesic properties and is like mildly psychotropic. There is a history of native indigenous people using Amanita muscaria for its entheogenic properties. The Sami people in Siberia and like Northern Europe, shamans going around collecting muscaria, but then people would drink the shaman's pee and get those sort of delirium effects. And that leads us next to the idea of this sort of psychedelic Santa Claus and the origins of Santa Claus having to do with this uh, indigenous tradition of gifting muscaria. There's zero evidence for that from an anthropological point of view. The current obsession with Santa Claus being red and white and thus the link to Amanita muscaria comes from Coca-Cola ads in the 1930s where he became this big fat jolly white guy with a beard and a red and white suit. This is one of the most common pieces of misinformation that goes viral every single year because it makes a great story. Reindeer would eat the Amity muscaria and get high and people would like get the stuff from the shaman and that has to do with Santa Claus. And it's a whole nice story, but none of it's true. People don't want to hear it. People get upset. No one wants me to ruin their little Santa Claus Amity muscaria story. So if you want to read more about it, there's a great article called The Myth of the Psychedelic Santa. It's got a pretty good breakdown on how these things aren't. And there's also a great podcast episode from Attention the Mind, debunking the mushroom Santa hypothesis.